Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'll be demonstrating how to paint both the Tau and Viola Sep schemes as seen on the box art. So during my time as a studio painter I got to paint both of these two schemes, Tau actually being one of the first projects I was lucky enough to work on around 10 years ago now. Today I'll demonstrate how we would go about painting these two schemes in the studio the white armor or viola sept is most likely the easiest and quickest of all the studio recipes, so if you're interested in creating a great looking and quick to paint white armor scheme for Tau or a host of different armies like White Scars, then skip ahead to around the 9.5 minute mark. So I'm going to start off here with the original Tau sept scheme which as you can see I've already base coated with Tau Light Ochre. This was airbrushed for speed however it also covers fairly well by brush over a Chaos Black Primer. The black undersuit for these schemes are both the same and whilst this video is mostly just focused on the armor, I might as well cover these sections quickly too. I started off here with a chunky edge highlight of Corvus Black around all of the edges. This is a very straightforward and efficient black recipe, similar to the gun casing on the Ultramarine video. And as with most chunky edge highlights here, we're aiming for around 2 to 2.5 two times the width of the finest highlights you can do. Once that's done, I place the next stage highlight with a 50-50 mix of Eshin Grey and Dawnstone within the previous stage. You could also just go up through the neutral greys here, so Eshin followed by Dawnstone and then a Ministratum. However, this way the transitions are still not noticeable and it saves having to do the extra stage. So the final sharp edge highlight on the black is Administratum Grey and then I carefully placed a few dot highlights using pure white on the corners. I didn't want to take too long on this really as I wanted to spend the time on the main armour panels. So with the black out of the way now, it's time to paint the main Tau Sept armor. As mentioned previously, these areas have been base coated with Tau Light Ochre. Then I'm going to run some thin down scrag brown around all of the panel lines and into the recesses. So after I've done that I wanted to add a soft gradient towards the lower parts of the armour and I did this by glazing the scrag brown over the panels. This adds a nice richness to the ochre and helps to describe the volume of the armour. It's particularly useful on these larger battle suits and vehicles. Once I've shaded the bottom of the larger panel, I added a bit of ochre into the scrag brown and then glazed this over to smooth out the middle transitions. Once that was smooth enough, I decided the panel lines needed a bit more definition than the recipe I had written down. So I used Doomball Brown with a tiny bit of black added in. This created a much richer and deeper shade that I then dropped into all of the panel lines.
So there's only two highlight stages on this armor and for the first chunky stage I used Ungor Flesh. I was a bit worried about this being too much of a jump in value so I added a tiny bit of the ochre to begin with, however I think you could just go straight to Ungor. So for the final sharp highlight stage here I decided to make a bit of a change from the original recipe which used Ushabti Bone and instead opted to use Screaming Skull. This is a bit brighter and helped to give more definition to the edges of the armour. Once that was done, all that's left to do now is to add a few dots of white to the corners of the panels. And here we have the completed Tau Sept armor. Now it's time to paint the white Viola Sept scheme. And I'm going to be starting off here with a pure white base coat and my preferred white for this is AK 3rd gen white, but you can really use any pure white. I would also advise on using a light primer for this as it makes it much easier to get a smooth base coat, and my preferred primer for this is Tamiya white or grey. Again I'm going to glaze into the lower parts of the panels, this time I'm using Baneblade brown and I've added a small amount of glaze medium to this, which I find quite useful for lighter colours to help smooth out the blends. So now I'm still using Baneblade Brown to carefully drop into the panel lines, 
This is applied quite watered down to allow it to wick into the recess. You could also probably skip the panel lines here as I decided to deepen the shade next. So for that deep shade I used Gorthor Brown, again applying this as a more controlled line shade. So you have to be fairly careful here with this shade, however if you do make any mistakes you can always go back and tidy with the white base coat before going on to the next stage. So this is one of the very few heavy metal recipes with no edge highlights. Instead we're using chipping to define the edges of the armor and for this again I will use Gorthor Brown. I like to roughly follow the edges of the armor with finer chipping to begin with which then I will add to with a few larger chips later on. It's important to keep the majority of the chipping quite fine as this helps to add to the scale of the miniature. Try to imagine where the pieces of armor are likely to take more damage and concentrate it here. You can also add a few random diagonal chips across the larger surfaces where perhaps shrapnel was skipped across it. And here we have the finished white armor. The black here is painted exactly the same as with the Taucep scheme earlier in the video. Overall this is a very simple yet effective scheme that allows you to spend more time on other detailed areas and markings and it also looks amazing on the tabletop. That's it for this video guys, hopefully some of this has been useful and thanks for watching.